Okay, so what are split corps? That is basically what we're going to be talking about today, but also why you would invest in it. Also, how I would personally invest in them, and if they're actually a good deal, because a lot of people will say that they're fantastic deals and you should invest in them, while other people may say that they're a scam. So, let's look into them. Let's see what they really are. Well, first off, what is a split corp? Well, Basically, it's kind of a fund that basically holds preferred shares in certain companies. This first one we're going to look at is the Dividend 15 Split Corp 2, DF.TO. And many people will say, wow, you really need to invest in it because, of course, you see the dividend and say, oh my, that looks amazing. I need that 18.6% dividend. That is, I need that. I, I need that drastically. And, of course most split corps will pay a monthly distribution so basically it's a fantastic way to supplement your income in case you lose your job in the future because of a virus the average volume is actually pretty strong of 200,000 shares traded every single day this is a very liquid stock split corp to be able to get in and out of however we have to look at the max because my point here is a very important point and that is look at the ups and downs and look at the trend you may be getting an 18 percent dividend every single year right now however the trend is not going along with you and if you're younger for example like myself i would suggest to stay the heck away from split corps because almost every single one i've looked at about 99 out of 100 will all go down so how can we actually trade this and I would never look at my age to look at a split corp and say, wow, I want to I want to get into that. I want to hold on to it for 50 years and get my 18%. I'm not saying that you can't, but you're going to be losing your actual capital, your book cost that you originally put in. And if you were smart, you would do this inside of a margin account or in a, to a cash account because that underlying asset that's decreasing is actually a tax benefit for yourself so that's how I would personally hold it myself if I was investing in it I would never put it into a TFSA or an RRSP because you can't do tax write-offs or tax loss write-offs on those so personally never get in never invest in a, in a split corp if you are in a TFSA or an RSP get a margin or a cash account to trade in because then at least you can write off some of your downward side uh, from there you are getting an 18% dividend so even though you've lost let's call it nine dollars down to a th uh, nine dollars down to six dollars which is about a 33% loss over basically a 10, I'm going to call it a 10 year period, you've lost 33% over a 10 year period. However, you've been gaining, uh, well back then it was the same dividend cost, but it was not the same percentage. Uh, I, I would have to do the math, but it doesn't, it's not, it, it would be like probably a 12 or 13% dividend over that time. Sure, you're getting your money back in dividends. You're getting a fantastic dividend over that time, but really, this is how I would personally, myself at my age, and I can't stress this enough, somebody who's 80 years old who needs to have a dividend like this is obviously going to be looking at a long-term investment. But for somebody who's 31 years old like myself, this is how I would personally invest in it. I would look for the massive downturns. Anytime that there is a massive recession, that's when I would be definitely looking at getting into a split corp because then they're going to recover. That's inevitable. And then while I'm getting that higher 20 plus percent in this case, anyways, dividend, I would be up here by the time I would want to sell it. So right now I would have been buying if I actually had a belief in split corps back a year ago, I would have been buying it during that dip. Maybe not that dip, that would probably scare the bejeebas out of me, but I would probably be buying it somewhere around there because guess what? $3 to $6, I would have doubled my money. At the same time, I would have been having a massive dividend and I would be actually looking to sell it about now to invest in something that's not going to go down further. And then when it does hit the next recession, I would buy back in. Now, keep in mind, when we zoom in, this is really showing something concerning in my, in my opinion. And that is, 
look at this volume into a high dividend paying fund. Right now, there's a massive movement into high dividend funds, whether it be ETFs, stocks, or even split corps, covered call ETFs, things like that. Anything that pays a high dividend, there is a massive amount of volume being pushed over there. What does that tell us? Well, personally, that tells me that the current market or the rich people who are kind of pushing the market they are not interested in growth stocks. Stocks like potentially Microsoft and Google, Microsoft at least pays a dividend, but mostly Google and other companies like that are not getting the same crazy volume as we see in high dividend funds or stocks. And in my opinion, I personally believe that we could be leading into a time or period where there is very little growth to the market and because of that, guess what? These rich people are starting to go into more dividend style or high dividend style funds or stocks because they want to supplement their income while the stock market basically does nothing. Or it could mean that the stock market could be tanking soon. And if that's the case, they would still be gathering their dividend while they're waiting for the market to recover. One of those two things may be happening very soon. I am personally mostly invested right now, so I'm not saying that to scare people to get out of the market. However, always try to pay attention to weird things that you see to try to make sense of it, and then if it doesn't make sense, kind of look into it further. And To me, this kind of makes sense to me, and it kind of gets me a bit worried. I just wanted to kind of warn you about that. However, keep in mind that for a very long period of time, it was trading within a range and it was trading between eight and nine dollars a share. Now it's at six. You could have another 50% jump, which is always likely. Remember, past performance does not always guarantee the future. And then when we look at the max chart well back before 2008, when that 2008 recession hit, this is exactly what I'm talking about, where market tanked, if you can try and aim to buy it at the bottom or if you were kind of buying on the way down where you can buy kind of on the way down until you hit the bottom until it starts recovering you could have made a pretty good return with a very high dividend the dividend is 10 cents per month and of course per share and then of course when you start going down all the way down to the bottom you can see that they just don't change the dividend the top core holdings of this fund is of course mostly high dividend paying stocks, for example, the Canadian banks, financial institutions like, of course, Manulife, and of course, companies like Enbridge and insurance companies as well. So fantastic holdings. However, you could just hold these separately. You just wouldn't be getting that massive dividend, mainly because you are getting preferred shares and preferred shares sometimes will pay you a higher dividend. This is another one that's kind of interesting. The North American Financial 15 Split Corp, FFN. And this one again does pay that same crazy dividend with some very insane volume as well for what it is. And again, when we're looking back to 2005 to today, look at this, same idea where it continuously goes down. Now keep in mind that it has been stabilized around 10 to about $3 per share or less. But either way, look at this too. More and more volume, every time it goes down, more and more volume, more and more volume. It's not going down right now with high volume. That to me again, tells me that there's a lot of rich people who are trying to get into the dividend style or high dividend style stocks because I personally believe that this the rich, rich people are thinking the stock market's either going to be trading sideways, which means that they need to make money somehow, which dividends do that for them, or it's going to be trading downwards over a long period of time. Personally, I think it's going to be this one myself from some of the information and charts and graphs that I've been looking at. I doubt it's going to be traveling downwards as a whole entire market. I think that we're going to be stuck sideways for a while because of course the world is still trying to recover. And we have to remember that the entire world has to go through recessions. We can't have a market that continuously goes up. We also can't have a market that continuously goes sideways. We need to have a recession and we just had one and it wasn't all that bad because the government was funding people. If they let the proverbial 
poo-poo hit the fan, then of course we would have had a longer recession and more people would have been hurt, but it would have been healthier for the stock market to have some kind of burning during, the time, during that time. However, it's been artificially inflated since 2008 and it's been artificially enhanced even before that. So because of that, I believe that sometime in my lifetime, there's going to be a world ending crash that will be eventually saved. But I think that there's going to be something crazy over my lifetime over the next 50 years, 60 years. Doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. No, but eventually. Sometime this has to go all crashing to the bottom again, like it did a little over 100 years ago, or around 100 years ago. But either way, these are my thoughts. And we have to remember, by having solid companies, for example, TD, CIBC, these companies that have been around since the 1800s, who have been paying dividends since the 1800s, guess what? They've lasted through every single crash, and it just seems that even the worst crashes ever 100 years ago and also in 2008, they all recovered as well. As long as you're in solid companies, you're pretty well set. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.